you know, the Taiwanese, the, they had experience with SARS in 2003. The vice president was an epidemiologist. Uh, he's now he's not, not, not in the same job. And, and so they knew what to do. They knew to clamp down very quickly. And, and of course, you've got a society where people think more about the community. They think more about, about the good, good of others. It's less individualistic. They're quite prepared to, to, to sacrifice some personal freedom for the good of everybody. And so you know, they've got a, a combination which, is, which has been able to, to succeed, where you know, in Europe and the US and, and so much the rest of the world, this, this push for freedom and individualism has, has created so many problems. In the 1960s, Malcolm X, uh, who was a human and civil rights activist, and black rights activist, talked about uh, how a chicken can't lay a duck egg. And what he meant is that a system which is designed to do one thing can't do something else. A chicken can only lay a chicken's egg, it can't lay a duck egg because it's not designed to do that. And in the same way, our, our social systems and our economic systems are designed and, 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 and focused on maximizing short-term profit. And if we want to solve our environmental problems or our ecological problems, then uh, climate change, we need a different system. It's not enough to, to try and change the system because the system is not designed to fix environmental problems. The system is designed to maximize short-term profit for a small a small group of people. And so if we're going to solve climate change, then we need to change the system. Well, for years, we've been saying that um, some fairly major things need to happen in order to turn the tanker, which is the uh, global economic system. And the things that we've been saying need to happen to stop carbon emissions and to, uh, to um, prevent runaway climate change. Many people have said, well, that's impossible. It's just, it's just not possible to you know, cut the airline industry, for example. It's not possible to shut down uh, production of consumer goods uh, in, at the scale that's necessary. Um, and so while people might have said that uh, our, our ideas were good in theory, in practice, it was thought to be impossible. And then COVID came along and lo and behold, for a completely different reason, those things started to happen. So we saw actually an opportunity with COVID-19 because the things that have already started uh, in, in order to control the pandemic are exactly the sorts of things which need to be continued in order to prevent runaway climate change. Exactly, I and mean, we've seen emissions falling in 2020 by uh, six or 7%. And that's what they need to fall every year now. We've seen people not using their cars so much. We've seen governments step in and help people, uh, some countries better than others, but, but pay people financially to stay at home. These are all the kinds of initiatives that we need if we're going to slow the pace of climate change. So it's, it's, it started us on the right path and, and started people thinking more radically about what the system means and what it achieves. And so we think we have uh, a unique opportunity actually to, to, to try and make some of these changes permanent and to move humanity in a better direction. So we believe that economic growth was necessary. Uh, we believe that economic growth creates jobs. Uh, we believe that, that individual freedom is, is, is more important than, than collective uh, responsibility. And uh, uh, so many of these ideas were, were deliberately pushed into society from the, 19, the late 1940s onwards, actually, mostly, mostly in the 1970s. But, but they've, they've convinced us that, that, that you know, we have to keep investing, we have to keep boosting profits, we have to keep boosting economic growth. And actually, none of this is true. I mean, for, for centuries, people lived without much economic growth relatively OK. Uh, and it's possible to, to, to live in, in a much more balanced way with nature and more, much more balanced societies. We just need to think about it differently. It's not, it's not a, a fundamental problem uh, with, with, with humanity. It's the way we approach the world. It's a mental problem that we need to overcome if we're to move on to something which is, which is more genuinely sustainable. I think if I can jump in, one of the things that really gets in the way of um, sufficient measures to bring down carbon emissions is this idea that every solution has to make a profit, has to be profitable. That's something that is a belief. It's not a fact. 
Um, but it's something that we really have to get away from. This virus is a direct consequence of our disregard for nature. You know, we, we have invaded nature space and it's not just this virus. I mean, if you look at, at, at MERS or SARS or yeah. HIV or Ebola, all of those are the same root source, which is that we're invading nature space and these viruses are jumping across into humans. And the longer you know, we carry on going down this pathway where we disregard nature, the more of these viruses, and this is not me speaking, this is the World Health Organization, the more of these viruses we're going to get. And so we need to change fundamentally uh, for our own health as well as, uh, as the health of the planet. What, what we've tried to say here is that actually democracy is, is part of the problem in some ways, because again, we've had our minds warped into what we're doing, that we think we have a democratic system because we make a vote every four or five years and, and we have two or three parties and that therefore the system is democratic. But actually, the system's not very democratic at all. And if you go back to the way things were in ancient Greece, you know, what they meant was the, by democracy was completely different. I mean, the people actually ran the country. Uh, a small group of people, perhaps, but certainly a large, much larger percentage of the population actually ran the country. Uh, and so we have the situation where we actually need to reclaim democracy, that, that we've lost it to, to, to a few irresponsible people, wealthy individuals who are, who are plowing their own furrow and corporates who are, are manipulating the system particularly. And so what we're saying is we need to, to raise awareness about the seriousness of this issue and then we need to kick out the people that are currently you know, running the political systems and replace them with some new people, with some new ideas who can actually think long term and think about the, the benefits of the majority. So we're, we're looking at, 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 at people taking back democracy. You know, this is not actually a technological problem. I mean, we can stop emissions tomorrow if we choose to. It's a decision. It's, you know, it's a mentality. We, we're actually choosing not to fix the problem. Mm. We're choosing instead to carry on releasing gases because it's more convenient and we don't want to live in any way that's different from today. So actually, it, you know, it's a social mindset problem that we're choosing not to fix. Uh, it's not a technological problem. And so even if you had some sort of ma massive technological fix, this, this economic mentality, this push for endless growth would, would still result in other problems. We have to change our mindset if we're to if we're to live sustainably and, and, and survive long term. Mm -hmm. We've both come across this, um, in, particularly in the NGOs that we've worked in, um, where there's a, there's a difference of opinion about how to move forward and, and where the focus should be. Um, and so you end up not actually moving forward in any meaningful way at all, because you're all arguing about uh, you know, the route that you should take. Mm. And so that's why we've said very clearly in the book, you know, one goal, and the goal is to slow the pace of climate change by cutting emissions by 7% every year. And, and, and everything else falls out of that. And, and you try and limit the damage and you try and help people. But one goal, and so you, you know, there's no debate about what we're doing here. Uh, and so we can focus on that one objective.